As we shift our focus over to the grain markets now, it's been a roller coaster start to the month of July. On Wednesday, the latest consumer inflation data was released. The CPI rose 9.1% from a year ago. Add to that weather concerns trying to drive prices higher for row crops. To catch up on all the latest impact of the grain trade, we caught up with Doug Simon on Wednesday afternoon from Trade Oz. It's not been much fun if you're a producer and looking at that, the selling prices, but uh, we have seen a big drop in oil too. We've had 8% drop on Tuesday this week and oil went back below 100 down to 95. So highs were around 130, you know, when we had the invasion of Ukraine. So we've had a lot of inflation in a lot of the commodities, but this last you know, couple of weeks have been really uh, devastating as they push a lot of that premium of the kind of the war in Ukraine out of the market. Well, it seems like there's been a, a lot of uh, different justification for some of the movement we've seen in, in the row crop commodities. We can dive deeper into some of those here, but big picture, what are two of the three of the most important ones that are driving things right now? I think the biggest thing really is oil price when you look at that and interest rates. You know, basically the Fed has increased interest rates to dampen inflation. And so that's really had an impact on a lot of different commodities. If you look at milk, it's down 15 percent. Copper's gone from five down to, you know, toward three. Um, lumber's gone from $1,500 down to $500. So some of those other commodities have been over a longer time, but we're seeing that more, you know, impact the corn and the beans now as we've kind of got, you know, as we've gone into the growing season, got the, you know, crops established, even though they've had a lot of hail and wind and we're dry, but, you know, we're, we're, we've still got fundamental questions there, but it's really been a week of fun selling right now. Well, you referenced inflation. We had the latest data come out on Wednesday. The consumer inflation data, CPI, rose 9.1% from year ago levels. What does that tell you about what we could see in the commodities? Well, it's it's all a reflection of what's going on in gas and, you know, diesel and the, and the oil prices. And, it's, and then it's also labor shortages. So you've got the cost push of the of the you know energies in there, but also we don't have the labor supply. So all those things add together, which is so by cutting you know or by increasing the interest rates, they're basically hoping to cool off demand. We had a WASDE report come out on Tuesday. Inter anything interesting from that uh, strike you? It was pretty quiet. Like the last time I was here, it was pretty quiet. And I said the bigger deal is going to be how does weather treat our yields, and that's still true. Uh, there wasn't anything terribly surprising. You know, we had basically. Less soybean acres, which was shown to us in the June 30th report, the stocks were up a little bit on corn. Those basically went into the balance sheets. And the big deal is too, though, is if we lose a couple bushels of yield on soybeans or corn for that matter, it really tightens up our bean balance sheet, which we'll know more about production come August. Uh, right now, I think people are asking, well, we like 2012. We're not that hot, we're not that dry. Maybe we were more like a 2010 or 11. Um, you know, those years we did see reduced yield from the heat. We've, if you look at Ellen Taylor's old stress uh, degree days, actually Purdue keeps track of that now, and they've actually, they, we are definitely below normal uh, on that, or our, we're, the, the, the stress is actually higher than normal. We've had less rain, more heat, and it's uh, definitely, so we'll see here, the forecasts haven't really changed. We're still warm and dry. There are some rains that can come through here, but are they widespread? No, so still concern, still on, you know, real, I think there's real important, you know, weather trends over the next two weeks can impact yield on corn pretty dramatically as we go through pollination and demand for moisture really goes up. Doug, as you know, here on Market Journal, we like to uh, solicit our viewers to see what's on their minds and ask them what kind of questions they'd ask you. I've got a couple of them I want to get to make sure I get in Daryl's question from Southwest Nebraska. He's curious about the funds leaving the market, asking you, are, are they staying in the commodities or what's your outlook for the funds? Well, they built a lot of length as we went from a really bearish market two years ago. And they've, you know, really kind of, they've hit about half of what they owned in corn and beans. They've taken wheat back to more neutral, but they're still long 150,000 contracts of corn. So I don't really see them going negative or, you know, selling and going on the, you know, kind of short, but they could come back toward neutral um, pretty easily in the ags. But, it, you know, really, I still think the inflation scenario is still in play and oil still, there's enough production issues there in the world that I, I don't see us completely collapsing the economy, the commodities and the economy right now. 
Well, Doug, before we wrap up here, I always want to get your thoughts on risk management advice you're offering right now. What can producers do to lock in some profit out there right now? Well, we're always looking at increments in the seasonal time frame, and the, the seasonals are pretty negative from this time going into the fall, or in beans more specifically to August. But we always like to sell increments over time. One of the questions you asked me earlier is, you know, what's a put? You know, and you can use put options underneath there and, and say, hey, if I want to try to protect this floor and spend a little bit of money. The opposite of that is like if I want to try to buy a call and try to be able to participate in the upside market. An example I gave you is what if you wanted to buy farm ground at $5,000 an acre, but now it's gone to 10,000. Well, that call would have given you an opportunity, but not the obligation to buy it at $5,000 an acre. But if it goes to 10, it's like, hey, I've got a $5,000 gain in my call or and I want to take advantage of that. So. The, just the converse of that is a put where I want to put grain to the market and we use that you know, to protect our selling price of corn. So you can use those things. When people say, I don't want to spend that much, I want to keep that money in my own pocket. So they'll do either a futures position or a hedge derived to just lock in those positions. But I think you have to look at what you're going to raise and what your crop insurance values are and sell increments. That comes from Bob Wisner over at Iowa State University and a lot of his seasonal theories of selling corn. And I'd like to use that idea. I think that serves us well over time. It's just kind of the the opposite of dollar cost averaging that people use on stock allocations. You want to allocate your crop over time as we know more about it. 